Hello and welcome to Frax 101. I'm Samuel McCullough, and in this episode, we're going to be covering FraxLend. FraxLend is a lending protocol that is relatively new in the Frax ecosystem. And today we're going to walk through it and I'm going to show you how you can use different collateral to borrow Frax. So when you go to the FraxLend page, this is what you're going to see. There's only one place to go, which is this available pairs. But what you're going to be shown here is a nice table full of lots of information. And so you may have some questions. So let's go through each of these columns so that you can better understand what is being displayed here for Fraxlin. So starting all the way on the left, you're going to have the market column. And the market column is a little bit misnamed. In reality, it should be the collateral column. This is the type of collateral that you're going to be putting up into Fraxlin and then borrowing it against. So you can see that we have collaterals like WETH and BTC and Stake Frax ETH, as well as some of the other Frax products like Frax Shares and FPI. Now, once you've determined what collateral you want to use, you then, well, right now there's only one type of borrow, and that's Frax. Uh, all of the pairs that, that go into Fraxlin, uh, they're all collateral where you deposit one type of collateral and then you borrow a different one. Uh, so there's a couple of different ways that you can uh, look at lending markets inside of crypto, right? Frax is pretty specific in how they've designed theirs. They said that we want to do one thing, which is deposit collateral and then borrow Frax. So this is not a multi-collateral lending. Um, you can't borrow anything else other than Frax, right? And uh, when you deposit your assets into these markets, you don't actually earn any return. Uh, you only pay what you do to, to borrow the fracs. So looking at the, the, the next column, this is going to be the Oracle column. The Oracle column just says, where does Frax get the data from? So for most of these pairs, it's going to be Chainlink. Uh, FPI comes from the FPI Oracle. And then StickFrax ETH has a UniV3 plus Chainlink and Curve. So sometimes there are some redundancies, uh, but typically everything comes from Chainlink. Okay, so the next three columns all kind of go together. Actually, the next five columns all kind of go together. So think about it like this, right? You deposit your collateral, and then you're going to borrow Frax. And then there's a limited amount of Frax in how much you can borrow in each of these lending pools, right? And once, it, once you borrow all the Frax in those lending pools, um, then you just can't do it anymore. So the way that the... Um, interest rate works for Fraxlin is it's a function of the total borrow versus the available amount to borrow, right? So let's say that $10 million has been put into a pool where it can be borrowed, right? If someone comes along and borrows $8 million of it, that's going to have a utilization rate of 80%. Now, if they pay a million dollars back, now they'll have a total borrow of, of seven of seven million, it's gonna be a seventy percent utilization rate. The utilization rate is what determines your interest rates. And uh essentially it says that there's this happy medium where interest rates should stay. And if they go above it, right? So if the utilization rate gets too high, then the interest rates are going to step up in a uh, timely manner. Right? It doesn't happen all at once. It takes a little bit of time to go up, it takes a little bit of time to come back down. Um, but the utilization rate determines where the interest rates are going to be. So if you look at the utilization rate of RAP Bitcoin right now, it has 89% utilization, but the interest rates are quite low, right? And so this means that it's probably going to have to go higher because if you look at other uh, pairs that have high interest rates, like the Stake Frax ETH, right? Uh, it has a APR of with a 95% utilization rate of about 88% to borrow and 135% uh, to lend into this. Um, that's pretty crazy. So for today's uh, example, we're going to go to Stake Frax ETH. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, take a look at this, okay? So here's here's all the different things up here. And I'm, I'm sorry it's hard to read. Let me make it a little bit bigger. This is better. Okay. So there's a bunch of stuff up in this column, and it might be a little confusing at first. So the total borrowed 
is the total amount that's borrowed. This is the uh, the total amount of frax that has been borrowed by people who have uh, used this collateral asset, in this case, stick frax ETH. Um, assets available, right? This is how much is left. So people have borrowed $9.6 million, and then there's $5.36 million left to borrow. Uh, and so you kind of like add these together, you're going to get about $15 million. And that means that there's a utilization rate of 64%. Okay. Now the next couple of things, uh, and, oh, right. And so then we have our, uh, uh, APYs, right. And also the borrow APYs. So we'll get at that in a second. Um, max LTV is how much, uh, how big of a loan you can take versus your collateral, right? So if you have a hundred thousand dollars in stake for ETH, right. Uh, you will only be able to borrow 75% of that. So you could take a $75,000 loan, but that's going to put you right close to liquidation. So you probably wouldn't want to do that. Um, right. So moving on, it talks about the collateral exchange rate, right? So this just is, comes from the uh, chain link oracles. And it says that there's 1.798,000 uh, USD per stick frax ETH. And this will go up and down as ETH goes up and down. And then the interest rate is variable, so it can go up and down. So now that we've seen this, right, we can come down here, we can take a look at the next part. So I've gone and gotten some stake frax ETH. You can see if I click the this here, it shows that I have 0 0.097, which is about $120, maybe a little bit more, maybe $150. So now there's a bunch of options what I can do. I can borrow, I can repay, I can add collateral, I can remove collateral, I can lend frax, and I can withdraw frax. Okay, so typically if you have collateral, you're gonna come here and you're going to deposit stake frax ETH, right? So I'll click on this. Um, this might be too many numbers, honestly. And um, and then I'll have a borrow, right? So like uh, I can choose, hey, how much do I wanna borrow against my stake frax ETH? Do I wanna borrow like 100 frax? So if I, if I deposit all my collateral and then I'm gonna borrow frax, right? It's showing me that my okay, my position over here after this, thankfully we have some arrows. Uh, let me see if I can make this a little bigger so you can see it because it's quite small. So my total asset borrowed after this transaction is going to go to 100 frax. My collateral deposit is going to be this, this 0 0.097. And my LTV is going to go from 0 to 57. Cool. And my liquidation price is going to be 1374 and I will have $24 left of frax over, left over at, after this transaction, which means that I could borrow another $24. So let's do that. Let's deposit the stake frax ETH and borrow some frax. It's pretty easy. We're just gonna uh, put max, right? And hit next. And we're gonna approve. And we're gonna approve it. And let's see what happens. So we got to do the approval transaction. And then we will do one, hopefully one more transaction to pull out the stake frax ETH. And while this is happening, right? So once I deposit my stake frax ETH in and I borrow that $100, my lending, sorry, my borrow APR is going to be 2.15%, right? Okay, now we have one more transaction um, to borrow the frax. We're going to approve this. And once it goes in, I'm going to borrow that $100. I will be paying $2 a year to borrow this $100, which doesn't really seem like a lot. But if I was borrowing $100,000, that would be $2,000 a year. It's still nice, though. Okay, there we go. Now we can go take a look at Etherscan. All right. Etherscan. All right. Okay, so now we can open up MetaMask and you can see that I have $100 worth of fracks. I have 100 fracks and uh, I have some ETH left and that's it. So now that that's done, I have my collateral that I've deposited, 0 0.097 stick fracks ETH. And I have 99 fracks that I have borrowed. I have an LTV of 57%. And if this ever gets to 75%, I will be liquidated, right? So 
if the price of ETH goes down relative to the amount of fracks that I borrowed, I will eventually be liquidated if the price goes below 1374. So what I can do next is say I've taken my loan, done what I need to do. I want to repay uh, some of this frax, right? So on the next tab, the re repay tab, um, there's a couple of things I can do. I can repay the entirety of the, of the debt, and this looks like a lot of numbers. Or I can withdraw, uh, and I can also withdraw the, the collateral, right? But if I don't repay it, let me just close this. I, like if I wanted to pull out my stake frax ETH at the moment, I can only pull out 0.01. Uh, and that would bring my liquidation price up to 1707, which at the moment is only about $50 away from where uh, the current price is. Uh, and that's not that great. So I don't want to do that. So what I could do is just press close position. It closes everything out. I don't have to worry about the um, position anymore. So let's do that. Let's repay the frax and uh, withdraw the stake frax ETH. So this is going to close the position. Right. And uh, I'll get my stake frax ETH back and I will pay the frax back. Um, and the position will close and I'll just be done with my loan. I'll, I'll have taken the loan. I'll have then paid it back and, uh, I can just clap my hands and everything goes away. All right. I have closed this position, I believe. Let me just make sure. Oop. Remove collateral failed. Okay. So if that doesn't work, let's try it again. Let's try to remove the collateral one more time and see how this goes. Going to let it run a little bit more and see how this transaction goes. There we go. All right. Uh, repaid it back. We're going to try to pull out the collateral one more time since I don't have any more debt. Let's see if this collateral removal works. If it doesn't, I'm just going to turn off this closed position thing and just try it on its own. Okay, let's just try this. Um, and maybe there's just too many, maybe there's just too many things here. Um, so one last time, I'm going to try to withdraw my collateral with a few less decimal places. Transactions going to fire off. I can look at it on either scan and follow it as it goes pending. Um, and it will complete here in a couple of seconds. All right, this looks good. Looks like I've been able to withdraw all my collateral. So now I have like all, maybe like a, a millionth of a penny of ETH here in this, in this thing. Okay, so say I already had, the next one is going to be add collateral. And with add collateral, this is essentially, if you have an open loan already, uh, you can just add more collateral, right? Same thing for remove collateral. You can also do this at on the repay section. So maybe these tabs are a little extraneous from a UI uh, setting because you can do it all here with this withdrawal, right? Uh, the last thing, so this has all been based, so everything that we've done so far has been based around my stake for Axeth, right? Uh, whether to borrow or repay. Everything's been based on the stake for Axe ETH. Now, the last thing to look at, right, is the lend and withdraw frax. So say that you have frax, right? Let's say you have a lot of frax. I don't know. Uh, could be anything, really. You can come to frax lend and you can deposit it and earn a yield. And that's pretty nifty. So I can do something like, let me go back. I'm going to borrow this again. And I'm going to borrow $100 worth of fracs. We're going to do something interesting this time. Uh, max. Uh huh. Approve. So let's let's do that transaction to borrow the fracs again, where we uh, deposit stake fracs ETH, and now we're going to borrow fracs. 
And this time, we're going to go deposit that frax into a different pool where I could get a higher yield. So let's put this in again. I hope you guys enjoy burning all the ETH gas for the purposes of this video. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's all just digital money at the end of the day. You know, digital rocks of gold. Well, not ETH, but is what it is. Okay, so now we've borrowed 100. Now we can go back and say, like, oh, man, look, this has 100% APY. What? Let's go in and deposit some. Oh, wait, no, this one's been fully closed. This one doesn't even have a, a way to deposit anymore. I think that's why the APRs are so high. Okay, but let's just say, like, Geome, right? Geome has, like, 10%. So let me go back to the thing. Okay, so with my stake frax ETH, I'm borrowing at 2.1%, right? I can lend into the Geome pool at 8.1717%, and I can make a spread of 6% a year risk-free. So I can click on lend, and I can deposit, and now I can lend all of this frax. I'm going to approve it. Approve. Approve. And what this is going to do is I'm now going to be arbitraging the interest rate between these two products. So as long as the borrow interest rate on stake for ETH is less than the uh, lending rate on Geo, I'll be making money. And uh, if it closes, then I can find something else or find a different product or something. Uh, but for now, that's 6% a year. I'd make $6 a year on this $100 right here. So after I paid back the uh, the loan, um, I'd have I'd have an extra six dollars. Um, so yeah, so this is going to be everything in Fraxland. The only thing is that like, remember to press this little show exact value buttons because the Frax UI likes to round up. Okay, and sometimes it's very nice to see the the full numbers, especially when you have collateral deposited and it just says 1.4K, that's not always correct, but we know our liquidation price is 13.74. So always click that button just so you understand and can see at the end what your actual interest rate is going to be or your liquidation point is going to be and the exact values for your for your borrow. All right, so that's gonna wrap up Fraxlin. I'm Sammy Mokello and I will see you in the next video of Frax 101, where we're going to go over FPI and VEFPIS. See you next time.